Hello, hello. <laughs> that was a nod to Dutch since there. Anyway, um, this video is about biophotons. Biophotons are ultra weak, relatively um, ultra weak particles of light in our DNA. Um, they, I believe, straddle our DNA helices and um, kind of as a general rule of thumb, the brighter the biophotons are, the healthier the system that the biophotons are a part of. So whether it's uh, human tissue, um, a dog tissue, plant tissue, um, higher, brighter counts of biophotons, concentrations of biophotons are going to be tantamount to healthier, more robust systems and the opposite uh, when they're lower and in darker configuration or, or concentration. Um, when you eat raw foods, whether it's a plant or an animal food, you are consuming those biophotons and you should kind of um, visualize them as teensy little LED battery lights in in each cell of whatever you're eating, whether it's the tissue of a scallop or a buffalo or a kumquat or a, a garlic bulb, doesn't matter. Um, if, the, if the plant, if the creature is alive and you're able to rupture the cell wall and get access to what's in there, all the goodies, then you can sort of vampirically or like an iPhone, take up the charge of those biophotons, where as once they're cooked, you literally disperse and spend that energy. That's why when you do curly in photography, the cooked food versus the raw food is like night and day, um, literally in terms of brightness. And that's because... Those biophotons, all those ionic um, bonds in your food molecules, which are extremely complex. Take, take the opposite on one hand. You've got table sugar that's just this refined crack rock-like substance that has virtually nothing redeeming about it whatsoever. It is literally pure calorie. Very simple. Simple molecules. Easy to break down just not good and then so that's a product of man a product of humans and then take on the other end of things a growth product either the living tissue of a plant or an, or an animal or human and you've got something that is incredibly incredibly complex more than can adequately be expressed in words you don't just have vitamins minerals um, fats proteins carbohydrates organelles um, but you've got DNA, you've got RNA, you've got um, just, I mean, you know, you, you've probably heard people um, sort of explain how much information is packed into DNA by explaining or, or remarking on how, if you were to unpack it from its coils and stretch it out, how long it would be. And that's, that's just an example of the complexity that is in a food substance. So when you eat a living, the living tissue of a plant or the living tissue of an animal, which doesn't mean the animal's dead. If you have a piece of steak that's raw, that cow's dead, but that tissue is still alive until it's not. And it stays alive for quite a while under refrigeration, and we are able to take advantage of the nutritional benefit from those for quite a while, quite some time. So uh, both plant and animal, um, eggs included, are living foods. So are dairies, but they belong to the specific age bracket of the specific species that they come from. And if you, um, if you violate that, you're going to be dealing with a lot of mucus and a lot of weird things because it's meant, it's custom design for that baby but anyways so raw foods have this biophoton in each 
DNA nucleus of each cell in each piece of food of their entire meal that each person eats. So your plate of ceviche or tartare or whatever, all of those are biophotons. You'll have the biophoton from the steak or the fish. Hey, come here, guys. Puppers, come. Sunbear, come. Sunbear, come, please. Sorry, puppies ran off. Um, you'll have, so you'll have the, the, the bio photons from the, from the piece of steak or the fish, from the pieces of veggie that you have in there, from the, uh, egg yolk that you use to make the sauce. Um, you know what I mean? It's just, it's, everything's charged electrically. And then when you go to process that food in your digestive system, you get to take advantage of that charge, whether it's just for processing the nutrients because if you don't, if you have cooked food in your system, then your body has to give from your electrical system, has to give energy to that that food, that non-food, technically, if you're talking about a cooked food, in order to make it edible, to make it nourishing for you. And it also has to detox a bunch of the different types of heat-created toxins, all the mayored compounds and the advanced glycation end products. And so... You don't get the benefit of eating a battery, of eating food-shaped sunshine. What you get instead is this toxic load, and then you get to eke out a little bit of nutritional well-being from it. And your body has to maintain any sort of pathologies or wounds or anything that's going on in the body where... where you know, you've probably heard it said that cancers are constantly forming and then your body's taking care of them. Those kinds of things all become more taxing than they should be because you're constantly, constantly, constantly fighting an uphill battle, eating cooked, whether it's plant or animal, tissues that have to be detoxified while being doped with electricity from your body just to render them edible, whereas the raw food comes with the sunlight the nutrients, the moisture, the structured water intact, and then you get to take advantage of that and you just suck it up like a battery and then you literally eject less waste because you needed less food to begin with because you're not constantly trying to rebalance everything that's being thrown off kilter with cooked foods, industrial foods, synthetics, and worse. Um, and so your body just gets to it's to suck that energy right up and requires less to begin with, ejects less waste material because of overall lower quantity and because you're not dealing with waste per se. You're not dealing with the toxic expulsion. You're, you're dealing simply with foods. Anything that your body ejects through digestion is because you didn't need it or it wasn't capable of being digested at the time but it's not ejecting it to get a toxin out of its system. It's ejecting it because it was superfluous. So um, biophotons are huge. You should hunt biophoton rich foods. These tend to be wild caught foods because the animals are able to live in the sunshine every single day. They're able to eat their biologically appropriate molecularly intact diet that is mediated by their instincts and their senses so their senses are going to lead them to the foods that they need the most at the time um, for chickens it's eyesight for cows it's vision and smell for dogs it's smell for cats it's smell and vision it just depends on whatever the main um, sense that these animals have directs them how it's how it directs them to the foods they need at the time so right after wild caught foods and wild foraged foods um, are going to be pasture raised and permaculture foods that are grown where they want to grow and with high quality soil organics not these chemicals not artificial concentrates other than like um, fertilizer tea, you know, things like that, compost tea, but nothing, nothing artificial because the magic is in the slowness. The magic is in the vitamins, the minerals, the soil, the sun, the fresh air and the clean structured water. So that's all I've got for biophotons right now. Thanks for listening.
Tak, igen, Sylvie.